Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ray. Thank you for joining me. Listen, it's been a long time, a very long time since I posted anything about my Super Duty, my Tremor. Now, this is 2024. Last year, I've been doing a lot of work on the house and I haven't been posting lately. But I'm back, 2024. Now I'm picking up on some projects I started on the truck that I didn't have time to do in 2023. Now, before my channel, you know I installed a Midland radio along with uh, an antenna on my roof. Now, if you haven't saw, the, saw those videos, I'll post a link below. I'll take you straight to those videos on how to install a radio into your truck. Now, I'm about to install my second radio, all right? I have a GMRS radio. I want to install a ham radio. And plus, I want to install a refrigerator. Now, to do that, I have to run it from the battery. Now, before my channel, of course, you know, I installed my own secondary battery because it, 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 the truck didn't come with it. All right. I kind of wish I bought it with a second battery, but no fuss. I'll show you how I installed that. So have the independent battery hooked to my truck. Now I have to run power to certain devices and I'm going to be installing this right here. This is just a, like a fuse bus to split that uh, the current. Very simple to do. Stay with me, show you how it's done. Any questions, any comments, please hit me below. Everything I'm using, I will be having affiliate links below in the description. Please go to those links. It does support this channel and I greatly appreciate it. So enough of me talking. Welcome back, back in the house with the Super Duty Tremor. Let's go. All right, guys, now, again, I'll put a link below on how I installed my Midland radio. Now, if you haven't saw it, I have it installed here, just the handle. I hope this is coming out kind of right there. All right, got it plugged in in this location, but I have the base in the back here. All right. Install this has been working out perfectly. Now I plan on adding my secondary radio, my ham radio, which is gonna go right here, but I have to get power to it. Plus, I wanna hardwire my refrigerator. All right, also, all running off an independent battery that I installed in this truck, so I don't have to worry about my vehicle battery going dead. Now, to do that, before I do that, I have to install this little thing here, all right, this little fuse bus, just to split the, the current in different locations. So I'm about to set that up. And what I'm planning on doing, I'm just gonna put it right up here in this location, and then I'll run every, everything independently off of this. Now you can run independent lights. Again, I'm gonna do a refrigerator, another radio, plus this radio coming off the fuse bus, coming off my independent battery. So, very easy to do, not too complicated. You're just gonna have to have a lot of, not a lot, but certain equipment available to you before you get this started. Now, you know, last year I showed a description, uh, I'll post a link of on how I did that. I did a lot of shorts. I got the power coming from the front. This is my power cable here. Now, what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to splice this off so I can run cable here to, to go into here. All right, very easy to do, not too comp. I kind of wish I would have ran this cable all the way over to that location, but it, I don't know. I just had a brain fart and I didn't think about it. So again, I'm gonna splice into this, reattach it. And now in doing that, since you're gonna, I'm gonna be running multiple components off of this, you gotta make sure you have the proper wiring, all right? Hey guys, listen, I just want to break into the video real quick. I kind of made a mistake when I informed what I'm about to tell you. All right, I'm very important again, do your own research. This is how I'm approaching it. But when you connect your main power to your battery, that wiring, that wiring should be a little thicker. All right, it should be by a four to six gauge wire. All right, I end up using a 12 gauge. Initially when I set up my radio, that's what it required. Now, being that I'm adding more components, you should go up a little more. Um, I'm gonna keep with the 12 gauge. I think I'm fine with it because I'm only using certain uh, devices in my truck. 
and I'm not carrying a big load. But just you, if from the beginning, use six, four to six gauge for the initial connection. Then after that, you can go to the 12 gauge, all right? I just wanna clarify that and that's it. All right, guys, enjoy the video. Let's keep it moving. And again, I'm no electrician people, all right? I'm just a DIYer. Uh, I'm using 12 gauge here, all right? right? The thicker the wire, the more, more current or um, voltage you can carry over that wire. All right, so make sure you have decent wire if you're running multiple units off of this, all right? I think it requires a 12 gauge to 16 gauge. I have 12, so I'm good to go. And that's pretty much it, all right? So that's the breakdown. Interested on how, where this bracket came from and what have you, hit me below. Um, there will be links in the description. Those links may be affiliate. And again, it does support this channel. So nothing to be talking. Let's just keep this moving. Okay, guys, let me uh, explain what I'm doing. All right. Again, I have to put this, uh, this fuse bus installed in the back of my seat here. Now, when you get this, it comes in a regular box made in China. Um, it'll have this cover case on it. All right. So just to take this off you just got to pinch the two ends to get this case off no foul you have a positive all right i hope you guys have seen this you have a positive and you have a, a negative all right positive and negative so my idea is to just simply mount it in the upper corner right here so out of the way when i put my additional radio which is going to be in the bottom here um, i just can attach my positive and negative sides to this. When you get this, they're gonna give you some screws, chic screws that goes in here that if if you want to use. But being that this is metal, you're gonna to have to get your own screws. I I had some machine screws that's already laying around in the house. It's gonna go here with a washer, the the anchor on this part here. Now, in my application, I'm only gonna have three anchoring points. Um, here, here, and up here. This one here is going to be a little too wide, which is not too, it's not a big deal. At least I got three anchor points. It's not going to be moved once you get it up here. It's going to be nice and secure. All right. I would like to have four, but I can get away with three. I don't think anything else I can say. Um, they give you labels once you get it, everything mounted. So my idea first is just to get this mounted in first. Then from there, I'm going to take my 12 gauge wiring and connect it and snake it down to attach to the existing wiring that I already have. And that'll be the first step. After that, then I'll reattach my Midland radio, and then I'll run the wiring for my refrigerator, and when I get my ham radio, I'll able just to plug in right here and run the wires. So that's pretty much it. This is, just, this is what I need, just again, to, to run additional accessories off of my second battery, and that's that. So any questions, any comments, please hit me below and let's just keep it moving. Okay, now, all right, I got two cu couple of screws already in this. Just a good uh, rule of advice. If you do have this type of rack in the back of your truck and if you've got how to take it off or you need to get in back of it, you can just remove the lockdown points. It's only held by one screw. So you can just peel this back so you can be able to get behind to screw this in. Just a quick tip. I have one, two, I need one more screw here to secure it. Again, this side here is a big gap. I'm not going to be able to put anything here to lock it in, which it's not a big deal because this is not moving. Once I get everything tightened down and the cables in there, it'll hold itself. Okay, as you can see, I got my, uh, my power wire coming from my battery, coming up, coming behind the panel and dropping over here. All right, this is my positive, which is my red. And here's my black for my negative. Now, I suggest you can just, two ways you can do this, all right? You can just show the wires, you know, peel this back, wrap around this and screw it down. Or what I'm gonna do, just for, so I don't have any problems coming loose, I'm gonna use these little connectors here. It's gonna slip on. Once I peel this back, slip it on here, crimp it on. And I'm just going to take the nut off and slip this on so I have a nice secure connection. All right. And any devices that I add to this, 
I'm gonna use something like this again to go into this so I won't have any type of short. All right, just my suggestion. You can do strip the wires, drop it in and tighten it. You can do it that way too if you want. You know, invest in these little plugs. All right, if you're doing any type of electrical work just to make it secure, that's my opinion. So let me just get this all tied into this. And then I'm gonna add my, I'm gonna splice my power wire into the existing wire that I ran early on. And that will be almost done. Um, to hook up the Midland radio to this and then later on I'll hook up my refrigerator run a permanent cable so I can plug it in all right and that's it so let me keep it moving guys and any question again hit me below any questions again everything that I'm using I'll make I'll put affiliate links just click through that and also I'll put the, a playlist of all the modifications I did to this truck so you're interested in doing the same thing or have some a baseline how to get certain things done, you'll have it on hand, all right? So enough of my gabbing and let's just keep it moving. Okay, guys, I'm, uh, as you can see, got my positive hooked up, got my negative hooked up, all right? Next thing, I'm just gonna add to connect my radio now. It's that simple, all right? Here's the cable. I'm gonna get it some tie downs to just to clean up this wiring. But as, like I said, by using these little, I, I don't know the name of them, but I put a, a screenshot with the coil, these little connectors. It makes it much easier to get a better connection. All right, unscrew it. I'm just gonna plug it in here. Positive, negative. All right, this is your positive side, these these terminals, and these are your negative, your negative bus. All right, so I'm gonna get this hooked up. Um, it's not connected yet to the battery. I'm just gonna get this all cleaned up, and then I splice my power wire to my existing cable and that's it i'll be done and i hope this is helpful for you guys out there who has a super duty and doing similar projects all right please consider like subscribe and let me just get this all buttoned up and we'll do it when i'm done all right all right guys let me show you my final results all right again forgive the wiring all right so i have to clean it up to my liking as you can see the fuse panel is hooked up. Have a power coming in. This right here is my refrigerator line. As you see right here, I have it hooked up to a Deutsche plug. It makes it easier to disconnect it to take the refrigerator out and bring it into the house. So that's why I put that plug there. And my refrigerator is right over here. Now I let this run overnight, plugged in and it's working perfectly all right it's nice and cold and that's why i always wanted to have my refrigerator constantly running so i don't have to worry about shutting it off turning it on shutting it off turning it on i just wanted to have a nice cold refrigerator my cold drinks in here and this is an ideal setup guys if you work out of your truck pretty much and you know the importance of having a refrigerator also have my midland radio also running on the independent battery i don't leave that on but again i can turn that on is as you can see my radio is right there the base is back here so i can shut the, the vehicle off i still have power in my truck for my refrigerator for my radio and this location right here will be for the base for the ham radio once i pick that up and get it installed so that's it guys i just want to give you my setup on how i'm doing it i hope this is information hope this information help you guys out there on figuring out how you may want to set up your system i think this is ideal uh it's easy to get to a, if i have to service it and again i have even additional outlets if want to if i want to add anything else which i probably will all right i'll probably end up my little charging station back here also for uh some some batteries or what have you everything that i'm using there will be links down there so if you want to know what that is check out those links They'll take you to the, the page so you can um, uh, pick up a, pick up the parts that you need. Again, like, subscribe. Enough of me talking. Have a good one. Later.